All right, so welcome to video two of the Shopify seller spreadsheet tutorial series. My name is Janet, I'm with Paper and Spark, and in this video we're gonna cover how to enter your Shopify fees into your spreadsheet, along with your PayPal transaction fees if that applies to you. Okay, so our next step is going to be to cover how to enter your Shopify fees all right so you have several fees that you might be paying to sell on Shopify first you have your subscription fee which I'm calling your monthly fee um, some people pay it monthly some people pay it annually that's your subscription fee to set up shop on Shopify a basic Shopify account the mid-tier or um, an advanced Shopify account so next we have Shopify transaction fees and I'm kind of going to break those up into two categories. First we have the transaction fees that are going to show up on your invoice and these are really only applied um, if you opt to not set up Shopify payments in your shop and it, it's not um, it's not necessarily all types of transactions that are going to get hit with this fee. Um, it's only if you do not set up Shopify payments at all. Okay, so most people don't have transaction fees on their invoice. It's going to show up at zero dollars because most people opt to turn on the option for a customer to use Shopify payments. Um, the other kind of transaction fee that you may have, it, which is not going to show up on your invoice, is going to be the credit card processing fee for people who do check out with Shopify payments. So we're going to enter both of those on this row, and I'm going to show you how to find both of those numbers. You, all, you might also have app fees, which will show up on your invoice, and we'll talk about in a second, and that's if you pay for any third-party applications integrated with Shopify, like something to use um, to buy shipping labels, for example. Um, and you also might have shipping fees if you purchase postage labels directly via Shopify. Those items are all going to show up on your invoice, which we will cover now. Let me preface this by saying that I don't actually have my own Shopify account. I have spreadsheet testers that have been kind enough to allow me staff access to their accounts. So I actually cannot, as a staff member, pull their invoices and their billing information from Shopify for them. I'm going to show you where you can go to find that information. I'm gonna show you a screenshot example of what an invoice will look like, and you will be able to find your own invoices based on those directions and enter that stuff in your spreadsheet. So if you are not a staff member and you are actually like the account holder of your Shopify shop, you should be able to click on settings. And then from here, you should see a choice that is called billing and you would click on billing and then you would click on invoices and then you would click on view Shopify account summary. So you are looking for the Shopify account summary or your invoice for the month basically. These instructions with the exact links to click are also in the PDF instructions for your spreadsheet since I can't show it to you. And you, if you need a refresher, you can look at those, but it's gonna be settings and then billing, then invoices, then view Shopify account summary. And then you should be able to pull your invoice for whatever month you're looking at. So this is basically a screenshot from the PDF instructions that hopefully you're reading. But the first line will be your monthly or annual Shopify subscription cost, okay? Um, and, you know, if you're paying annually, you're not going to see this charge every month, obviously. The next row will be your transaction fees. And remember, if you have Shopify payments as an option for your customers, your transaction fees are going to be zero. Your shipping fees, which if you pay for postage directly through Shopify, you'll have shipping fees. If you use a third-party app or something else to buy your shipping labels, then that's going to be zero as well. Um, your application fees, and then you may also have sales tax. So whatever you see on this invoice, now is the time to enter them on your spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pretend that this is a bill for the month of August. 
Okay, so here I am looking at my bill. So I have got, I'm doing August, I've got a $79 um, subscription fee, and I have $0 transaction fee, and I paid $142.42 for shipping labels. Okay, so one thing to note that I wanna say right off the bat is always enter your expenses as positive numbers. The spreadsheet already knows to subtract them. And there's lime green rows for you to enter some of these Shopify fees right here on the monthly summary tab. But we've got a, a, a tab especially for postage. So I'm going to navigate to my yellow postage tab and I'm going to enter my shipping label expense of $142 for August on this yellow postage tab. Um, what date do I put? This is the bill for August. So I'm just going to date it for the end of the month. I know that it's for shipping labels all throughout that month, but it doesn't really matter. An expense is an expense, and you don't need to break this out date by date. So I'm just going to enter the lump sum as of the end of the month, and I'm going to give it a vendor of Shopify and a description of shipping labels, and um, there's room for entering other info if you want to do that. Okay. Now check out the PDF instructions because it has a little bit more info on how you need to type your dates. You've got to type those dates correctly for the monthly summary to be able to pull it back onto the row that it belongs on. So now my $142.42 is showing up on my yellow postage row. Do not try and type that uh, postage expense directly on your monthly summary tab. It's not going to let you. It's going to tell you that the cell is protected. That's because you need to enter it over here on the yellow postage tab. This gives you the ability to enter more detailed receipts or transactions for these types of expenses. Finally, I've got my application fees. And um, I'm not sure what this user is, is doing with this application, but you would enter the application fee on whatever expense category tab makes the most sense to you. So if it's um, an application that you use to buy postage labels for, you'd enter the $29.97 on your postage tab. Um, if it's an application for something else, you'd enter it in the more applicable space. And since I don't use Shopify, I'm not really sure what other kind of applications there honestly are. Um, so I'm just going to enter it under other. That's going to be my best guess. So again, I'm going to do 831.16. I'm going to make it be for $29.97. And that's what I'm going to do. And so now my $29.97 it's going to show up on my August other row on my monthly summary tab. And if you have sales tax showing up here, um, I would probably just lump it in with your monthly fee. That's where I would put it. If you really want to, you can take the sales tax rate and multiply it out by each item on here and add it to all you know three or four items that are showing up on your bill. Okay, so that covered how to enter most of your invoice Shopify fees and whatnot to your seller spreadsheet. Let's talk about your credit card processing fees that Shopify charges you. So this is for any payments in which a customer checks out using Shopify payment processor. Okay, so if you have like PayPal turned on or um, you know a third party credit card processing thing turned on, um, those are each going to charge their own processing fees. If someone chooses to check out directly with Shopify payments, then Shopify is going to automatically deduct a credit card processing fee from that sale before you even get the money. So we need to get the that fee expense for the month and subtract it out on your expense section of the spreadsheet. Alright, so to find this report, you want to click on settings and then you want to click on payment providers. And then you're going to see this Shopify payments box up here. You want to click view payouts. 
Now this stuff listed here is a list of when Shopify actually paid out to your account. You don't necessarily want to export this payout. So that's not what you want to do. You want to export the transactions because that will show us the fees taken out of those transactions. So you want to click transactions first. See that very slightly changed the screen that we're looking at. So after you click that transaction button, you're not going to see anything here anymore. And it'll say transactions up top. Then you click export. Then you enter the start and end date of what you want to download. So I'm going to do January dates, January 1st through the 31st. You want to make sure that the CSV for Excel numbers or other spreadsheet programs is selected. And then you click export payment transactions. Now, unlike the other CSV sales file we downloaded, this one is not going to download straight to your computer. They're going to email it to you. So you actually have to go check your inbox. And I find a lot of times it goes to the updates tab if you're using Gmail. So once you find the email, the best way to get it on your computer is to right click and do download linked file. Then it will save to your hard drive and you can open it in your spreadsheet file of choice. It will look something like this and your Shopify payments fees will be in column J. Your next step is to sum up these fees so that you can enter them over in your Shopify seller spreadsheet. And the easiest way to do that is with a simple sum formula. So I like to click on the last blank cell underneath my fee data. That's row 22 in this example. And then with that blank cell code, selected, you can click on this sum button right here, which will automatically sum up your fees in that column for you. So once you click that button and you've got your dancing ants around all the numbers that you want to sum up, you can just hit enter or return and it's going to tell you the sum of that column. If for some reason you don't see this sum symbol right here, there's a few other ways you can sum this row. You can also just type a simple sum formula, which starts with the equal sign, the word sum, and then an open parentheses. So I've got equal sum, open parentheses. I can click and drag all the numbers I want to sum. I use close parentheses to finish the formula and then I hit enter and that gives me the same result. So I know that my Shopify transaction fees for the month were $22.67. I can go right over here and enter them directly in my Shopify transaction fees row for January. When you're done with this file, I recommend saving it to your computer. Let it be a backup of how you calculated the number that you entered over on your spreadsheet and just make sure that you hold on to it in case you need it for record keeping purposes. Now, if for some reason uh, you did have other transaction fees entered for this month, like you had some showing up on your bill, you might just need to add those two amounts together and you can do that with a simple formula. So let's say I had $10 showing up on my invoice and then I had $22.39 showing up on this report. So I would just hit equals and then I had $10 and then I just need to add. So that's just gonna be plus $22.39, okay? So I'm just adding that together and then I hit enter and it's gonna add those two fees up for me. So that is how you enter your Shopify monthly subscription fees transaction fees, credit card processing fees, shipping labels, and third-party app fees into the spreadsheet. All right, so our next item to tackle is going to be entering any PayPal transaction fees into your Shopify seller spreadsheet right here on this peach row. We're going to enter that directly on the monthly summary tab. And I know a lot of, pay, uh, a lot of Shopify sellers offer PayPal as another method for checkout for their customers. So I'm just going to show you a quick and easy way to figure out the fees that you are paying to PayPal each month. So you log into your PayPal account. This is only going to work for business PayPal accounts because the reporting capabilities are different for a business versus a personal account. You're going to navigate to reports. Then you will click statements monthly and then you can download whatever month you want to see so let's check out August 
and it's going to open this handy little PDF uh, file with some different info. And now on page two, we can see our PayPal fees for the month. It's going to be on this row called fees. And I had $27.15 of PayPal fees. So I'm going to enter that right here on my spreadsheet. Remember, I don't need to enter my expenses and negatives. Spreadsheet knows to subtract. So I've got $27.15 for August PayPal fees entered in the peach row of my seller spreadsheet. Now I want to mention something about PayPal and those fees real quick just so that we don't get confused. Um, those are your total fees for PayPal for the month. So if you are only using PayPal to accept payments on Shopify, then those fees are going to be everything taken out of those Shopify payments processed via PayPal. However, um, you might sell in multiple places, not just Shopify. You might invoice customers directly via PayPal or use PayPal on Etsy, Amazon, uh, a standalone website. Basically, my point is that if you use PayPal for any other sales venues or to accept payments independently, then those fees are going to be covered by that fee total as well. So just make sure if you're um, later on going into more expenses for the month, your PayPal fee amount that you just entered covers all those sales venues. Okay, it's not just Shopify if you sell elsewhere. And when you're hanging around your PayPal account, looking at this report, um, you also might want to check it out for some other helpful expenses or sales that you need to enter in your Shopify seller spreadsheet later on. So the remaining pages of this report, they're going to have some helpful info for you. They're going to show you a transaction by transaction list of all the things you use your PayPal account for. So you might have some business purchases in here that you want to enter in the appropriate place on your spreadsheet, probably on one of these expense tabs, and we'll cover how to do that next. Um, you might buy shipping labels or pay for postage via PayPal. In that case, the, um, you can look for any transactions where the description says U.S. Post Office, and you can enter those on the postage tab of your spreadsheet. And you might even have, like I mentioned, some sales from non-Shopify sources showing up on this report. And remember, um, if you have imported your Shopify sales already, you're going to see those Shopify sales showing up here again. So don't enter them twice. You want to go through this report and just look for non-Shopify sales that you haven't already entered, okay? So that pretty much covers how to enter your PayPal fees, and what report you can use to enter the rest of your PayPal transactions if you have any. You can check out the next video to see how to enter your expense receipts in these expense category tabs.